Let's take a look at how we can leverage instancing with some animation and still get some variety out of the package. What we're going to do is start off uh, by getting rid of a few things here. Let's get rid of the camera and the light. I'm going to press X to get rid of those. And let's go ahead and let's start by raising this up here. Let's just go GZ9. Um, and let's add a plane in here just for something to work with. Let's go S40. And what we're going to do here is we'll use the a couple use the array modifier a couple times basically and we'll make some uh, make some copies of this um, let me let's start off here by getting a feel here what's this the, hey, let me just go G and move this over here more in this vicinity. And I think that's going to be okay. And let's go ahead and get ourselves some modifier action going here. Let's go ahead and throw the array modifier in here. Let's go by a factor of two in the X direction, or offset of two, excuse me. And let's have, um, how many we should we have over there? Um, I have 40, so maybe 15. Let's see how far that is. Oh, let's actually make it. We can get away with 19, I think. Yep. Go 19 that way on the X. Let's go ahead and add an array over here. Let's go 19. And let's go on the Y. Let's go by 2 on the Y. And that should be a nice set there 19 squared nice uh, a little less than was that 381 or something so let's go over here and do what we need to do let's apply this and apply this now everything here is currently one single mesh so what we need to do is tap into edit mode um, basically right click we can right click and um, separate by loose parts and then we can tab into object mode and we can uh, um, yeah so here's where it's going to get a little object so they're actually going to link object data so we're going to link the object data, which is going to actually collapse them all down to the first one, which is kind of awkward, but it is. We're going to lose this really nice array look, but yeah, everything gets collapsed down. But bear with me here, because what we'll have to do here then is uh, go up to object transform, and we're going to have to we'll randomize the transform. We'll go set some randomization parameters over here. Set the X randomization parameter to, um, what is it, 40 meters. I should probably stick it in the middle then. Um, and then I'll have to move everything over the middle. And then I'll select the Y to also 40. And then we'll just center this from just just eye it up a little bit and center it. So let's look at it from the top. So it's currently centered there. Let's just go ahead and G and we'll just eyeball it. Try to get it just about right. Some of these things might end up falling off of the, if we want to use some physics here to animate, but that's okay. That's what we get. I could make the other, make the plane a little bit bigger. So maybe I'll do that. Yeah, I'll go ahead and uh, scale the plane up 1.2, make it a little bit bigger so it has plenty of room right there to handle all those things. All right, 
So let's go ahead and just with the plane selected, I guess might as well add a material. And let's just go ahead and do that. Let's look at the material. Let's go ahead and could add one of those randomization materials on the duplicates. It can make a special material that does that. But let's just, for now, let's enable X-ray so I can get all of these selected. And um, what do we want to do here? Actually, let's go to object. Uh, rigid body and let's add active to all of those let's select this one just to make sure that we're good let's just go over here to uh, physics and rigid body see if it's yeah that's active active this by default is going to be active I'm just going to change that to passive um, if we just look at how everything is right now, yeah, we end up with a, a mess with the way things fall, but that's perfectly fine. I'm all good with that. It's kind of kind of cool. Um, let's see when all the action happens for the most part. Uh, let's see what's happening here. That's perfectly fine. I'm going to put some things up higher. So this is, right, this is closing in, getting close to 400 um, instances. What will end up being instances here? But um, let's go ahead and let me grab one of these here. I got a material. Really doesn't matter if I change the color here to. Let's make it something like that, just to make it show up a little bit better. Okay, so maybe draw back the time. I want to kind of play around with the timelines of these things. There's different ways we can do this. I also like to play with, I should also, maybe I should randomize the height of these as well. So I've already randomized that dimension. Let's go ahead and change things around a little bit. Let's go ahead and randomize the height. So the same way that we did it before is object transform. Let's go ahead and randomize. But this time, let's go ahead and only, they're already randomized. Set that to zero. Zero. Um, and then let's go ahead and set the um, the Z though. Let's set the Z to eight. Let's see what we get right there, because that was our initial height. And then let's lift everything up. Let's just go G Z. Lift everything up. That way they have fallen from different heights. It's a little better. All right. And let's go back and uh, see what our animation is kind of looking like at that point. Go ahead and click off here. Oh, okay. So I had that. So I, I got to go back and set, obviously, the ground to passive before I do anything else. Got some right. We got some unique physics going on. With some of them getting shot up first, which is nice. I just wanted to have some variety in there, and that seems to do it well. So uh, about 136. Now let's even make it a little bit more varied. So that's going out to 130. So that's still happening. 120, still moving. 136. I might keep the whole 250 frames. And what I will do is I'm just going to go take 
some of these just to get a little bit more variety over time. I probably could end up doing this with like animation nodes. Um, but before anything else, let me just select everything and go and set, bake the keyframes. All of the rigid body stuff, let's bake all. It's gonna take a while to do that because there's a decent number of things there. Like I said, going up, up there around 400, I think it was 381, something like that. So, if we have 381 rigid bodies, it's going to take a while to compute all of that and commit that into keyframe data. Especially if we're going over 250. Uh, 250 frames, 250 frames multiplied by 381. It's quite a bit, quite a bit of uh, going on there. So I'm not gonna bother this too much because it's letting me know it's it's computing. I hopefully, hopefully don't crash my computer with this. Physics solvers uh, are some of the most computationally intensive things, especially when you're running a lot, you know, a lot of rigid bodies. There we go. Finally, though, it did it. Okay. Um, so. Now, for the most part, everything is done at, there's literally nothing. Well, that's like way underneath. So I, I'm comfortable with saying like 180. So everything could move about another, let's just say 60, at least 60. So what I'm going to do with that in mind, if I can move things around a bit, if I click on any particular box, I'm just going to be able to go uh, G and move it up a little bit. I'm just going to do this with some of them just to apply a little bit more randomization. And you can see all of these have different kind of numbers of keyframes depending on how long it took them to kind of come to rest so to speak so i'm just going to move these to different times to have some more kind of randomness despite the fact that right we're dealing with essentially what are going to end up being instances and to have the benefit of instances along with variety that's where i think the happy happy spot is you know, i'm not going to do obviously all of these i'm just gonna do every just do a few of these so that they're not all firing at the very beginning so some of them wait a little bit later to fire Here. Yeah, most everything's firing right from the beginning, but not everything. We'll just do a few more of these. All right. Oops. Don't want to do that. But anyway. Okay, this is good. Might have. Sometimes I'm messing up where I'm clicking. Okay, there we go. All right. So, a little few more of these. Still so many of them that are just firing at the beginning. Okay. 
Let's start. Okay. Right. Okay, let's go see now if we wanted everything back here. Now let's see what it looks like. Yeah, that's even a little bit more. There we go. There we go. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so let's go ahead and export this. Let's just call it... Is that 381? So let's say 381. 381. I, I guess, for instance, random timing, RT, and different heights and stuff too, so that will, that should be good. I did a much smaller one with random timing uh, just a little bit ago. I'll take a look at that. This is, uh, this has random timing, as we can see. This is only like six or, I don't know, six or eight, something like that. Yeah, these are going, and they're all going from the same height. But you can see these are going at random times as well. But how about we upload this one? 381, randomly timed. At different heights too, at random heights as well. So that's uh, that's important. Okay, so really, what I'm doing here is trying to dig into some of the nuances. Um, I'm going to dig into uh, like the number of vertices next. Really looking at how this kind of scales up in terms of the compute, the overhead, computational cost. You know that ends up getting incurred as a result of different parameters increasing. Um, and then I'm also looking at instancing versus non-instancing. So I'm trying to get a really solid feel for this. Um, especially important now is like the auditorium. It's just about to get rolled out and had some early issues with the animation, the way that was being done. So I want to be able to provide proper feedback for that environment and other environments as well. Well, thank you. Take care.